Welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Alfa Romeo Quattrofolio you see behind me. This ultimate version of Alfa Romeo 510 horsepower rear wheel drive. The model of Alfa we've been waiting for for decades. Finally our true driver's Alfa Romeo. Um, lots of promises in these cars. I've been itching to have a go in it especially as you know owning the Project 8 so I'm going to do that as a separate video those two cars together but for now I'm going to concentrate on this car as it stands and there's so much to explore in this car because it's a really special really different Alfa Romeo from all the years of uh, cars we've had in the past let's go and have a closer look it's pretty amazing to think it's 25 years since we've had a rear wheel drive Alfa Romeo saloon on the market but that's when the last one disappeared um, off sale the um, Alfa 75 because it's best the, it's the brand is best remembered for like that alpha um, gtv that 1750 the two liter one i had uh, a few years back and now it's so great to see them coming back with this car um, and one that's been so eagerly awaited by enthusiasts for decades as you imagine it's a twin turbo v6 and it's got those intercooler um, either side that's what those deep open holes at the bottom are just below the offset number plate which is the signature alfa romeo look um, and the, the big grills there's a lot of cooling to get um, done in this car that little splitter you see a little tiny bit of carbon at the front well weirdly that actually comes out electronically at speed whenever it's needed a really neat trick so it tucks away when parked up like this um, wheels this the car's got some extras on it including these um, five hole traditional style uh, wheels 695 option a bit cheeky they actually charge uh, 495 i think it was to have your calipers painted yellow rather than black this car's on got the regular steel brakes there is a carbon option a very expensive option about five and a half thousand and also it's 19 inch wheels on this car 245 35 90s but they're pretty coarser tires so a pretty um you know track type tire a, um, a summer tire rather than a sort of dual purpose normal uh, tire for this car so a dramatic uh you just a signifier of the performance this car has that they feel that's the tire you you fit to this car the quattrofolio badge that's the the four leaf clover badge that's the signature of the the hot alfa romeo from um, days gone by it's great to see it reintroduced it's been used on some sort of lukewarm front wheel drive hatches up to now and it's great this is a proper fire breathing alpha for it to return um, around the rear you've got the quad pipes a rear diffuser and a little lip spoiler rear wheels are 285 30 19s also it's got that other little hidden caliper up there for the handbrake that's why it's got two different calipers at the rear something i'm doing new for this year is i've bought a set of scales and i'll be weighing the cars as they come in to test and also showing, sharing some of the weights of the cars in here as well because this car what, what a lot of manufacturers are doing are only um, actually declaring their dry weight so fully stripped of all fluids and it's getting a bit out of hand they're taking brake fluid out battery acid you know it's just madness i want to know what this car weighs sat here before i get in it to drive so i could compare like for like and uh, I put this on the scales and it comes out at 1665 kilos on my scales. It's got about um, just over three quarters of a tank of fuel. And they've gone to great effort to get that weight on this car down. To the soap, I've got a magnet with me and I'm just intrigued with the construction of this car. If I do it on the doors, you'll see it doesn't work because these are aluminium doors on here. But the actual structure of this car, if we open the door and I go onto there, well, that's all magnetic, all, all this all uh, structure is uh, steel as you'd expect but when we look under the bonnet the bonnet is actually carbon and then it's got aluminium bits for the suspension of things so a real effort to get into the um, drop that weight and that's a pretty competitive weight um, and it's yeah it's got 510 horsepower to move it around so as you'd imagine it goes pretty quick 600 newton meters as well right let's have a look up the front There you go, all carbon fibre, quite amazing. That's an expensive item to do that. V6 in here, um, same bore and stroke as the Ferrari V8 you find in the Portofino and things like that. Um, this car was also developed with some of the engineers, uh, chassis engineers at Ferrari, but they, Alpha are very clear that this V6, despite it having identical bore and stroke and um, capacity, has nothing to do with the V8 that Ferrari developed. I don't believe it for a minute, and it's a great thing to champion, I would have thought, to have a connection to Ferrari like that. But again, in here, this is this is all aluminium. You see the structure? 
structure of the car here is very odd, the top of the suspension things. But if I go back here, we turn to steel again. So it's a really quite complicated construction in this car, all to get that weight down. Um, twin turbo V6, the, the turbo is in the conventional pattern underneath. It's not a hot V, it's a conventional pattern and twin intakes as well from the two intercoolers coming in here as well. Okay, just before we get around the back, I want to show that I can actually sit behind me. It's a bit tight. This is carbon back seats here, so no nets or anything. These are another expensive option. I think they're 3,000 250 pounds to have the Sparco carbon back seats and then you don't get electrical adjustments and the standard seats are pretty good anyway and at the back a little flip up spoiler and a big black hole uh, as you can see a quite a narrow entrance no spare wheel no nothing a bit of foam and that's it right what we want to now do now is go and drive the car so I'll take it outside and we'll see what it drives like you go what's quite nice in here is you get real instruments on uh, the alpha um, starting as you'd expect is by a button a button on the steering wheel there oh, yes radio is quite keen to come on and uh, yeah it all lights up I've got um, engine temperature on the left and I've got fuel comes up with um, miles per hour and a sat nav strange screen in the middle actually in that it's let's see if I can turn the fan down there we are um, strange screen is in the middle you can have a split screen or um, have it as I have as a full screen uh, and then you can see what radio station you're tuned into at the bottom so a sort of double purpose um, carbon trimmed in this it's quite nice stitching in here this is only a £195 pound extra to have the green and the white stitching. It's done very well uh, and also the, the carbon trim everywhere etc. Um, gear lever, 8 speed gearbox on this, um, it's not transaxle, it's bolted to the back of the engine. Carbon fibre prop shaft they're very proud of as well. Um, so this is yeah a nice place to be if um, it's quite tight, I feel quite tight in here, quite high windows. What I love though is I look out the windscreen and I can see the edge of the carbon bonnet and you just see this glint of carbon fibre under the paint uh, of the car. I also just say the colour of this car is a Competizione red, um, a three layer red. It's quite another expensive option now, which was at um, £2,250 extra, this particular red of this car. Anyway, let's get going. Um, I'll go down, go and find some better roads and I'll join you later. It's very important first impressions of a car and, your, and my first impression of getting in this car and setting off is oh, it's quite normal actually and you think you've read all these rave reviews and it's this fire breathing Alfa Romeo of 500 and something horse about 191 bar now top speed and uh, your first impressions are this is utterly normal there's no hysterics there's no crazy sounds there's no trumpeting exhaust when you start it up it's all very muted rides pretty good and then it's got the magic bumpy roads um, button which you find on Ferrari of course this car has nothing to do with Ferrari at all and you can press that and you get a really good ride mirrors are normal big there's no over styled dash or anything wheel it's a little way well, this is an extra um, cost as well something uh, flat bottom steering wheel that has Alcantara leather and carbon fiber craziness and the start button on it but that's about as crazy as it gets in here um, and that that I have to say is a surprise it'll even do if I stop here yeah stop start as well it's got slightly annoying indicators I keep thinking they're going to cancel and they don't and you touch it again you think you've cancelled it and you haven't cancelled it it's one of those like bmw-esque indicators that drive you around the twist that um yeah that um b pillar is right in the way it seems to have quite short doors not quite sure where but that's quite intrusive where that appears plus size in the cabin also behind behind the wheel are monster great paddles uppy downy on the paddles of course it's just starts in a um, auto mode it's an eight speed um, automatic gearbox in this 
um, a very reactive one. I had to check whether it was a dual clutch transmission, but everything talks about an automatic gearbox in it, but it has an instant reaction that is more DCT than most automatic gearboxes. So yeah, really nicely done. But yeah, digress. The, the paddles, whenever I see giant paddles behind a steering wheel like that, I always think that is a car developed from the outset to have paddles. I always think if you're gonna put them behind the wheel, um, some people prefer them, but I always think, well, that's a bit of a cheat. That's a car that didn't actually, was born to have, um, not have uh, paddles, but has them as an option on the top models or something like that. So I really like big aluminium paddles like this behind the wheel. As you know, in the family, we've got that other Alfa Romeo, the um, Giulietta Veloci. And that's the same. It, it, it's first impression, so this is more mature. It's more of a GT than the crazy thing. And uh, that's the same vibe you get from this as well. I'm quite looking forward, though, to taking it up to one of my favourite bits of roads up here. And I think we're going to discover a completely different car up there sort of default mode seems to be this dynamic. Alphas have this DNA as they term it, um, which is, well, I think it's a dynamic and natural, and then all surface is sort of snow setting. And then there's a crazy, turn all the way across, there's a race setting, which we'll explore later on. But in dynamic, this is just the mode you're gonna use most of the time. And everything's sort of slightly turned up, but only marginally. There's a little deal of inside up here. I'm a bit bored of this sort of normalness, so I'm just going to poke it as we set off over here through the deal of inside and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Yes, um, yes. It does change character completely when you start giving it some noise. Um, yeah, a really a different character to this engine. It's super smooth. I, it, I, I'm, the more I live with this car, the more I think the engine is probably its star turn. It's it's very quiet, very powerful, loves to rev out. Yes, it's turbocharged, but it's a very good turbocharged engine and it's easy to live with. And it has that surprise factor. Each time you poke it, you think, crikey, it really is fast, this car. And passengers are amazed by it. It's that torque figure, 600 newton meters of torque. That's sort of Zonda levels of torque almost. 440 something um, foot pound. You have to move up to the AMG um, C63S or something to get more. That's a 500 something uh, pound foot of torque. But um, yeah, it's a really nice power plant to sit behind. Right, so make life a little bit more interesting. I'm now going to select a race. It wants me, it says, best race experience with shifter in manual. Okay, we'll do that. We'll just see what happens next. This is its maddest, craziest mode. Doesn't feel that mad, actually. But a uh, bit more vocal from the exhaust. Quick steering as well, really pointy. It's on those coarser tyres. And um, yeah, we're lucky we've got dry conditions now. When it first arrived, it was wet. And uh, it was, yeah, quite lively. You were very conscious that it was rear drive and you were losing traction and you just had to be on your toes. I thought they were a bit warm, but they weren't actually. They're, they're fine. It's just their character. Uh, but in the dry, yeah, they're, they're a really good tyre. Once they've got a bit of heat in them, you've got them, you know, gone down the road. But um, yeah, it does change the character. Let's just take it out of, let's put it into dynamic. So yeah, there you go. Surprise number one with this Alpha is it's very livable. It doesn't feel as crazy as the um, crazy stats might suggest. Typical pops and bangs from the back, as you'd imagine with a, today's performance cars and these turbos. I mean, they are, they don't have the, the rich noise of this, but yeah, no. It's, it's quick steering, you're hardly moving the wheel through a, um, 
feels like this, pointy, it feels very Ferrari-esque on that one as well. That is a characteristic of, um, yeah, well, Ferraris and now Alpha that they have. This is two and a half, I think it's slightly less than two and a half turns, lock to lock, that's really tight. Normally it's three, three and a bit. German manufacturers like to have a higher um, gearing on the steering. Don't know why, but um, it's just the characters of German cars. Italians, complete opposite. They like fast, quick steering, TBR like. But all I'm really using is that torque of torque. Um, just hits on a no wave of it and the speedo starts saying speeds I don't want to repeat in public but yeah no good rides good not too much um, noise coming to the cabin from you know road noise etc who'd have thought a sensible Al Alfa Romeo crazy uh, quattro I can't remember it's probably called now quattrofolio that was what it was that's what I was going to say it does round here second only gets you to 57 miles an hour. I wish the brakes were a bit firmer. They're a bit soft, the brakes feel. They have some pretty trick um, sort of mechanics, how it actually works under the skin, the brakes. But um, yeah, these steels, they just have that slightly soft feel. The only other thing I've noticed about it is the, oh, those indicators again. The only thing I, through a series of bends like that, it's a slight act of faith. You know it's got the course tires, you know it's quick, it's quick steering, but I'm not actually getting a huge amount of feedback to encourage me to do it. It does it, but I'm not reading it. I'm not, you know, I'm doing it on instinct rather than on information I'm gaining as a driver. And, it, and it's mighty impressive, but I just wish there was something a bit more coming from the steering. There feels quite a lot of rubber in this car, shall we say. It's the, on the plus side, it's very insulated, but actually, dynamically, I'm not getting 100% where we are really racing what I would expect from a Quattrofolio and the Ultimate Alpha. So how do you summarise this car? Well, it's been terrific to live with. It's just finally we have an Alpha worth shouting about. It's gone at performance, it's taken the fight to the Germans, and uh, that's what we wanted from Alpha for all these years, and finally we now have it with this car. But there are some buts of this car, I feel. Number one, styling. This car is, uh, as, it, as I'm driving it today, this is a 70,000 pound Alfa Romeo. It does 191 miles an hour. It's three point something, 3.9 to 6 they claim, although I see um, auto car tests and they got four and a half or something like that, but it's a quick car. And yet from the outside, I think it just plays it down a bit too much. And I know sort of cute car-esque sort of cars are in vogue, but I just think it ought to have more visual drama than it actually has. I, I suspect more, it feels more like the GT version. I'm waiting for the Quattrofolio version to come out. And, but yet, the GT is actually the Quattrofolio. It's, it's just an odd start. They used to have a racing pedigree. There was a Gato, all sorts of things in Alpha's history. And this is, you know, the showcase ultimate one. I just think they could have tried a little bit harder on the styling. I wish it was a bit more vocal as well. Engines, you know, the sounds you enjoy from a car like this come in three forms, generally. Exhaust, induction and just mechanical noise on the engine itself. In this car is one, it's all exhaust and because it's turbocharged it's slightly compromised on exhaust sound as well. It, 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 it gets together when you give it full noise but this is such a smooth engine I'm getting zero mechanical noise. Weird that I think that's a negative but it is super smooth and absolutely no induction sound at all. So I'm only getting the exhaust sound to tell me I'm in the ultimate sporting Alfa Romeo. So I, yeah, I think they could have done a little, perhaps a little bit more with that. You'd get much more from um, the Ferrari 488, for example, than I do in this car. Another positive, seats, cabin, steering, controls, everything's in the right place. And I really like that bumpy uh, road setting as well. 
So, yeah, someone's thought long and hard I could drive this car a long way. So that's a big plus, is this car is mighty usable. All day, every day, no issues. But really, I just wish they'd added that extra 10%. The performance is absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic bad on the front. It doesn't feel quite as special as I thought it was going to. And a £70,000 Alpha needs to feel really special. So I sort of, I like it. It's a, it's a 9 out of 10 car. But I can't wait until they do a 10 out of 10 car. And they've got all the groundings for this. This is the great base. But let's see where Alpha takes us next. Because they are on a roll with a car like this. It's so much better than what's gone before from a driver point of view. So there you go. That's my summary of the Alpha. Julia Quattrofolio. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon.